welcome back to our next lecture of inflation so on the last lecture we discussed uh, the impact of inflation the positive impacts of inflation how inflation causes uh, <coughs> it how it increases the profit margins of firms and when their profit margins increases they increases the production and finally it increases the gdp growth or the economic growth of the economy and how it provides an assurance to the firms that there is demand of commodities or services and that is why they will invest more than when they will invest more that ultimately causes increase in the economic growth so this was the positive uh, impact of inflation and we discussed the philip curve the relationship between rate of inflation and rate of unemployment and then we discussed the negative the negative impact of inflation how it decreases the real purchasing power how it decreases the real rate of interest how it decreases investment how it decreases the savings rate of the society so all these negative impacts we discussed and after that we discussed <coughs> the measures to counter inflation so we discussed the monetary policy is one measure so by adopting the contractionary monetary policy you can decrease the inflation you can counter the inflation and then afterwards we discussed uh, the fiscal policy so fiscal policy measures we discussed like we have taxes so taxes should be direct taxes should be increased indirect taxes should be decreased then we discuss <coughs> after taxes we discussed the public expenditure so the public expenditure of the government should be decreased and then we discussed the borrowings so borrowings from rbi should be decreased and from the general public it should be increased so all and afterwards we discussed the <coughs> supply management measures under which we discussed increase the import <coughs> provide some incentive to the producers like farmers msp and all these things and how to liberalize the apncl so all these things we discussed during last lecture now we'll discuss the last two topics of inflation that is <coughs> the recent trends and causes of inflation under which we'll discuss the recent trend after 2008 recession what was the scenario how this inflation growth all these things were related and after that we'll discuss the causes the recent causes of inflation and at last we'll discuss few definitions which are related to inflation so we'll start from the recent trends under this recent trend as is being depicted on the board that before 2008 <coughs> there was a very high growth rate that was the golden era of indian economy during which the rate of growth was more than even 8.5 or even 9 percent so india was growing at 9% 8% growth rate and the rate of inflation was also low so that was the best scenario any con for any economy this is the best scenario having high growth rate and low inflation but when the recession came <coughs> and the recession started from the developed country so when the recession came the demand of goods and services we discussed the recession cycle in which the supply becomes more than demand so when the supply is more than demand the demand of the commodities is, will decrease so when the demand of commodities in developed countries commodities means goods and services both we can say so when the demand of goods and services decrease in developed developed countries our exports to these countries that will decrease because now they don't need our goods and services because they don't have money so when <clears throat> our the demand of our goods and services by developed countries has decreased our exports decrease and when our exports decrease so the production of these goods and services in india decrease and when their production decrease that decrease our growth rate also so our growth rate decrease as a consequence of decrease in growth rate or decrease in demand of our goods and services in developed countries and to overcome recession we discussed that after keynes this keynes and all we'll discuss in uh, recession unit so after keynes or after this new Keynesian theory to overcome recession we have to hit at some point and that hitting point we already discussed in that vicious cycle you have to increase the purchasing power of the society so the purchasing power of the society should be increased and how to increase purchasing power how we provide them some money and how to provide money now that tools can be different quantitative easing adopted by USA similarly quantitative easing adopted by european country japan in india also we adopted similar to this but that is termed as mg narega so under mg narega we increase the liquidity of rural areas mg narega is one program 
so that increase when money supply inc to overcome recession you have to increase money supply and when money supply increase that cause inflation in the economy so after recession or during this recession era when we also increase the money supply as well as the developed countries also increase the money supply and when developed countries increase their money supply that cause dollar tsunami that we already discussed so because of all these uh, things which are interrelated to each other the money supply in india increased and which caused an increase in inflation simultaneously at the same time during 2008 to 2012 the global food price increased and when this global food price increased so agriculture inflation due to agriculture commodities or food inflation also increased across the world then after 2012 and 2014 in 2012 to 14 the in india there was a moderate growth rate the growth rate was not that good it was 4% 5% or something it was not like 8 or 9% of pre 2008 or pre recession era it was moderate growth rate 4% 5% the inflation was persistent at very high level because the liquidity increased at very high pace maybe within india also it increased by all these programs of government social security programs of the government like amjin dega as well as from external world also it increased because of the dollar tsunami cheap availability of funds from outside india so because of all these reasons there was a very high persistent inflation in indian economy then the global food price decreased during this era our currency depreciated drastically up in 2012 to 14 earlier it was 45 rupees and from 45 it became 60 because the demand of dollar increased but the question <coughs> comes ki when currency depreciated why not our export increased ideally when currency depreciates our export should increase but it didn't happen during this era that will discuss once we'll cover this thing so this is this will still be a question mark then after 2014 what happened is the growth rate increased so now we are growing at more than 7% so growth rate increased the inflation has moderated so in inflation can be measured by different different indices we discussed so it can be measured by wpi as well as cpi wpi is negative but cpi has although decreased from 8 9 10% percent to 5% percent, but it is not negative the reason is because of this in moderate inflation the food inflation is still high and when the food inflation is high if the weightage of food in cpi is more so cpi cannot be negative if the weightage of food in wpi is less in case of wpi we discuss that in wpi the weightage of primary articles is 20% and the weightage of food we can say is exactly 23% why it is 3% because 20% some related to 20% will come from primary and then we have few processed food that comes under manufactured which gives a weightage of 65% processed food jam and all these things so the weightage of food is only 23% so <clears throat> if the price of the rest of the 77% weightage items is decreasing so wpi will be negative but in case of cpi the weightage of food is 50% so although the food inflation the decreased price of other commodities except food has offset the increased price of food so although the food inflation is very high but the value of cpi is less the reason is because the weightage of food is high in cpi and less in almost 50% of cpi and it is less in wpi that is why wpi is negative for more than one year so this is what and then the currency is <coughs> stable uh, the currency is stable at 65 rupees 67 rupees whatever the price is so now we'll discuss ki why our exports didn't increase when this has increased ideally it should increase but it didn't happen in case of india the reason is the only reason is inflation we already discussed the net effect of inflation and currency depreciation maybe 50 to 60 rupees and if inflation is like 5% so their net effect is going to decide whether the export is going to increase or the export is going to decrease actually what happens is if there is high inflation in the society if this is 
high inflation. So if high inflation, the real rate of interest is going to decrease. This we already discussed, real rate of interest equals to nominal rate of interest minus the rate of inflation. When real rate of interest is decreasing, so whoever wants to invest, that person will look after some other alternatives. If so, for example, gold is there, land is there, share market is there, whatever extra in options that this guy will be having. So this person will invest in other options except that 4% of the savings rate or 7 or 8% of the FD rate given by the banks. So the ideal asset in the mindset of Indian society is gold. So people started investing in gold. <coughs> so gold investment increased. When investment in gold is increased, but the problem is so the domestic production of gold in India is not that high because we import a lot of gold from other countries like Switzerland and all, but domestic production is almost almost nil, 99% we import. When the investment or gold investment is increased, so the demand of gold will increase. And when demand of gold is increasing, but problem is when you import something, suppose this is the India. And when you import something, you have to repay in dollar. So if demand of gold is increasing and we don't have gold, so we have to import gold. And when you have to import gold, you have to pay in dollar. So it means the demand of dollar has increased. And in other words, what we can say is, if suppose the demand of onion has increased, so the demand of onion, for example, this is 1 kg onion. Earlier, the price of 1 kg of onion was 30 rupees. Now it became 50 rupees. So what we can say is, when the demand of this thing is increasing, the purchasing power of money has decreased from 30 to 50. Similarly, when the demand of dollar is increasing, the price or the value of rupee will decrease. Suppose earlier 1 dollar was equal to 60 rupees. So when demand of dollar will increase, so the price of dollar will increase. So now you have to shell out 70 rupees to buy same 1 dollar. In other words, we can say when the demand of dollar increases, domestic currency depreciates. So similarly, our currency depreciated when there was a very high inflation. So ideally when currency depreciates, so the exports should increase. But the problem was, <coughs> our exports increased although, but our imports, they become costly. Because why exports increase? Because exports become cheap. And that is why foreigners, they will purchase more things from India. Because it is becoming cheap, but the imports become costly. And our import basket is more than our export basket. What we export is roughly 300 billion dollars. And what we import is roughly 450 billion dollars. So if this we are getting profit in this thing and we are at loo we are losing something in case of import. So the net effect will be negative only. So this actually happened. And there was a very high inflation. So because of very high inflation the prices which ideally should become cheap due to depreciation, this thing was offset by the increase in the cost of production. This we already discussed. The net effect of inflation and the net effect of currency depreciation. So when exports, when the imports become costly and our import, more than 33% of our import is only one item that is known as crude oil. And when I'm saying my import is becoming costly, or in simple words when I am saying my crude oil become costly or in other words we can say the price of diesel and petrol in India it has become costly. When the price of diesel and petrol has increased that is going to increase the transportation cost and transportation is the backbone of <coughs> selling of any goods or services. When transportation cost will increase so that is going to increase the prices of all the goods and services across India. 
so that is ultimately going to increase the inflation so it becomes a vicious cycle even when there is very high inflation so very high inflation itself causes very high inflation so this was the scenario which we faced in 2012 13 and all these years so this is what i wanted to discuss as the recent trends and now we'll discuss